Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Ross, introduce the guest, man. I don't even know if I have to introduce Dylan anymore because uh, he's been on the show so much that uh, people have probably seen him loads of times. People have probably seen him. <laughs> remember. <laughs> We're, we're hosting auditions between uh, Dylan Moore and uh, Ian Gary. Heard and enjoyed. Here, lads, first of all, cheers! Uh, happy, happy Christmas, lads. This is uh, this has been the weirdest year ever, and we're still alive. Cheers, lads. Oh, stop! It's Freudian, isn't it? It's a uh, very, very strange year. I think, I think it could be more of next year than less, if that makes sense. I think, like, you know, if June is six months away, I think things won't be back to normal by then. I think we have yeah. another at least six months of this sort of COVID stuff, especially with. The case numbers at the moment are crazy in Ireland. So, uh, hopefully, everyone can just you know wash their hands and blend, get rid of this terrible virus, and hopefully, yeah, that vaccine's rolled out sooner rather than later. I think it's actually starting tomorrow in Ireland. Nice one. So that's good. Nice one. Well, here we have the man of the moment on the show, Dill. What's the story, bud? You're looking fresh in the car, guys. All good, and thanks for having me as always. Yeah, I thought it was fitting to fit to see out the year with the last show of the year having you on deal because like you've come on a good few times uh, the funny thing is we've never actually met in real life but i feel like we know <laughs> like, so i well, know well. yeah i know it's well over you yeah oh, but fuck. we were just saying before the show we were trying to calculate when we last had deal on the show but in between then you've had three fights and then i was asking you are you gonna get one more fight in you're like here i'm training with conor mcgregor and i was like what and then i only saw from the stories one person wearing a conor mcgregor hoodie and i was like that's not blatantly obvious at all and then, like, obviously, obviously, then you had that, you put the picture up with Connor, the whole thing blew up in between Jay Paul and everything, all this craziness. So we thought we'd see out the year, get this all off your chest, and then new, new year, new everyone, 2021. So, Dill, like, obviously, you're back in, you got three fights in a row, you're just kicking ass at the moment. And, like, how's it feel? Yeah, um, look, I came home from Germany at the end of the summer, and it uh, just needed to get back to work, you know. Right. Um, yeah, because the list is fine. Yeah, sorry, it's for yeah, joking, yeah. because the list is fine thing, like, that, that fell apart as well and that like you were like high low high low and then that was a low and then you got the three wins Congrats, yeah I, I don't Congrats, want as well on it but what started off as a yeah. disaster year it's ended up being one of the best years i've ever had um i came back at the end of the summer got to work straight away uh connor slater got me out in spain i got a win Um, i said let's keep the ball rolling went to poland got a win then i went back to spain to alicante probably about four weeks ago now and uh had a good eight-round fight over there against David Bensley, got a win, and a week later, I was in Portugal training with Conor McGregor. So, yeah, like I said, it's been a, a whirlwind of a year. Who could have guessed? We could go for the highlight, right, though. It's crazy. You couldn't, I swear, and it's just like, the harder you work, the more things that happen for you. That's how it plans out. Couldn't happen to a better man, Dale, I swear to God. Ah, and thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, Dale, out of all those things that happened in 2020, one of the few people in the world who had a great 2020, which was actually the best? Uh, you know, this Conor McGregor thing, even talking about it now, I'm still, I guess, shivers talking about it. You know, being Conor McGregor's sparring partner for the Dustin Poirier fight, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, I was in Portugal for two weeks. What an experience it was. Home for Christmas and we go to Dubai next week for the rest of camp. It's cra uh, crazy. I still can't believe it. No way. Is that what you asked for Christmas, was it? Is that what you asked? I know, for yeah, yeah. So Santi got me what I wanted. <laughs> how did that how did that come about with the Connor thing though? Like did he DM you? Um, yeah, like I said, I came home, I was just busy fighting. I got a call and said, Look, would you be available to go to Portugal and help Connor McGregor prepare for Dustin Poirier? Obviously, I didn't have to think twice about it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got that win in Spain, the last fight I was on about, and the week after I was on my way to Portugal. I've been out there the last two and a half weeks. Um training and inspiring with Connor and uh, yeah like I said a great experience um, home for Christmas and we go again next week and Dylan I'm sure it's not the first time you've been brought into someone's camp but what is the sort of protocol for that like I assume your flights and accommodations paid for I assume your food's paid for but like tell us like is it different for different camps or like what way are you looked after yeah guys listen obviously I've been in camps all around the world uh I couldn't speak any higher of the one I've just been in. Um, looked after to the highest degree. Connor himself, right down to the last member of his team, on, even on the security team, are all absolute gentlemen and women. Um, couldn't be more helpful. It was a great experience. And like I said, I'm looking forward to going again. Well, could you, can you talk, bring us through a day in the life of a training camp there? Because like, I saw, all, like, for people that don't follow you, make sure you do. 
But uh, the way you were even showing the food off, it, it just looked immaculate. Like the, the, no seed was left, like un, like uncooked or I don't know what, what way to say it. I was just like, that's five star. Everything, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no, it it was top of the range. You know, it was in um, it's just the setting was crazy. You know, you've got Conor McGregor training for one of the biggest fights in the world in Lagos in Portugal, and this little gym just tucked away. Him and his team from day one working hard. Do you know what I mean? It was great to get a look at that and it, it, just an insight into that circle. Um, like I said, it was an amazing experience. The food was good. The training was good. Uh, so I was there specifically for Connor's boxing. And then he'd have someone specifically for his wrestling. And then he'd have someone specifically for his striking and his MMA. And um, we were just all training every day. And then you can just get the call that you're needed for sparring. And you, you get ready and go to work with the champion. Like I said, it was a great experience. I'm still dwelling on it, running it all back in my head, thinking, yeah. yo, this is crazy. And uh, it's not over yet. Like I said, I, I stayed in the gym over Christmas. Look, the little part that I'm playing, I'm delighted to play it and I'm taking it serious. I've stayed in the gym. I'm very fit today. And, you know, when I go to Dubai, I'll be in good nick and I'll give Connor that, that good sparring. And, you know, the better I am sparring, the better Dylan I can give him, the better he'll be come January the 23rd when he steps into the octagon. And until this deal, how good is Connor at boxing? Listen, guys. So I couldn't comment on it just like he couldn't until I went over there. Connor McGregor is, I give him my name, he's the real deal. The guy is the real deal. You know, I, I've watched him have it with me on a Monday, have it with some world class wrestler on a Wednesday, have it with some world class striker on a Friday. And I used to think I had my hands full with just boxing. And I'm watching this guy come in, box wrestle, strike, jiu-jitsu, all while being a businessman and a father. It takes somebody special to do that. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And was there ever ever any fear of uh, you doing your boxing sparring that he was going to throw in a cheeky kick or a knee at some stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, actually, before the first spar, he looked at me. We were getting warmed up and he goes, you used to do a bit of kickboxing. And I goes, yeah, I won't be kickboxing today, though. It's just the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's that's mad the way he knows exactly your history as well. That's crazy. He, what I, uh, I've kind of took from Connor is when he goes at something, he goes at it. There's no holes barred. Like the guy gave me a, a, a kind of talking to about Jemson whiskey being French, and it was the most powerful 10 to 15 minutes of a speech I've ever heard. And this was kind of the first week I'd been there. And after that, I just knew this guy is different. You can see, like I said on social media, the magic is just there. He's unique and made for the cameras. Yeah, I remember. That's we, funny. We, I remember I work we, for Jemison Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it is French, is it? Yeah, well, it's owned by a French company. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you a story. The first time we ever met Connor, right? It was just after he beat Jose Aldo, wasn't it, Ross? Yeah. We were in Chris and my club in town. And then uh, it was just around this time, wasn't it? I, th- I think it was about five years ago. And then, like, obviously, we were drunk. And then Ross was like, Connor McGregor's over there. And I was like, no, fool. <laughs> and then he's like, no, nah, I'm only messing, man. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. He's like, no, I'm only messing. He's right there. And I was like, no way. And when I met him, it was like me, Duran, is getting in a picture with him. But uh, it was almost like he floated. It was it was so weird. I'm like, I'm sure, like, Ronaldo has that effect. Messi has that effect. Dylan Moran has that effect. But Connor McGregor definitely has that effect. Uh, no, the, the guy's presence is just different. Um, His knowledge, the energy of him. You know, when he walks into a room, it's just standout. Without him even trying, you know, we're just training. And I'm a kind of, I'm a guy, I'll try and learn as much as I can wherever I am. And I was watching him and studying him, you know, and coming from, I've just done two weeks with him. And the fact that Connor can show up to the gym, look, let's say it as it is, he's not short of a few quid, you know. He can show <laughs> up to the gym and get on the mats and train harder than anyone's there. Like, I pride myself on hard work. And I'm watching this guy put it in as much as any of us. And you have to respect that. He doesn't have to be there. He doesn't have to be doing it. And he, he's not playing tennis as such. He's going into the octagon to fight. You know what I mean? Dustin Bryant, come on. And to be able to show up and put that kind of work in at the stage he's at in life, is, like I said, you have to respect it. Yeah. It looks like he started a new chapter in life as well. Just even way when he, like, the way he shaved his head, he looks so driven right now and uh, yeah. like myself and Ross were saying like who are the biggest winners and losers of this year I, I actually mentioned Connor this year for what he's done this year even helping out SPG Port Arlington stay alive Good. just uh, compared to how tarnished his name basically was last year this year he's a whole new man who knows what he's going to be like he's going to be a savage in 2021 Listen, I'm the kind of guy I say, I say it as it is you know what I mean it's black or it's white you're good or you're bad you can't you can't Connor McGregor is an absolute gentleman 
genuinely, you know, I, I, I like morals and people, manners. The first day I'm there, he jogs across the mass, you know, it's a new face, knuckle touch, wish me a happy birthday and inquired about the fight in Alicante. If anybody doesn't have to do that, it's Conor McGregor. Like, I've been brought into camps before where the guy I'm sparring wouldn't say a word to you, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's just all little things like that. Saving that gym in Port Arlington, come on, you know, like I said, I put it on social media, I said the papers wouldn't write a good story. Come on, how many people are doing that? You know, um, we're in the Irish bar over there and there's a, an old Irish owner of the pub. Uh, he likes the proper 12 whiskey. Connor brings him down two or three boxes of it and puts it behind the bar for free. You know, he, he's that kind of guy and people don't see them things. And I've seen him, you know, and, and I'll tell everybody about him because that's just the way it is. And Dylan, who else was in that camp with you there? What were faces and names or were... Um, so, so like, as well as Connor being a world-class athlete, He's got a world-class team. You know, you've got Phil Sutcliffe, Irish boxing legend, looking after his boxing with Bra, Raj, Andy O'Neill, the best cup man in Ireland, uh, John Kavanagh, Owen Roddy, uh, Sergey for his wrestling. He's got an elite team of people behind him, all throwing in their ideas and all working together. I was there, obviously, for the boxing. Um, I don't know, Sergey or no, Costi was one of the guys for the wrestling. Uh, Willow Hayden, another Irish amateur standout in the boxing, was there from Crumlin. Um, yeah, all high-level guys. Obviously, Keen Cowley, world-class striker. Lee Hammond, world-class wrestler. It's crazy. that the, Look, at the end of the day, when Conor McGregor gets in that octagon January the 23rd, he is a result of the team he has also. And he's got a world-class team. The A-team. The A-team. Yeah, yeah, the A-team. I like it. And that really is something that Connor's actually really brought into the camp is uh, Phil Sutcliffe. Did you actually learn much from him yourself? Because, you know, obviously you're picking up boxing tips from him. You know I mean, like you say, he's a world-class trainer. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm looking forward to working with Phil when I go back to Dubai. I learned loads in the two weeks with him. He's obviously head of the boxing over there. And like I said, Phil Sutcliffe is an Irish boxing legend. You know, been to two Olympics been all around the world, Barry McGuigan, sparring partner, you name it, and he's done it. You look at look at Crumlin Boxing Club and look at the Irish titles they've racked up. You know, the proof is there. And the fact that Connor brought him back, that's something that I like about Connor as well. Connor could have 10 Freddie Roaches in his corner, but he went back to his day one coach, you know what I mean? Phil Sutcliffe, sticking by John Cavan and all that. That stuff is hard come by in the world we live in today, also. And one thing I have to ask about is Connor McGregor, in terms of mixed martial arts, is known for his power. Does that power actually translate to boxing? Oh, guys, I said this to... I was doing an interview the other day, and I said, I think it was the first bar. I was still kind of in shock. I was looking at him thinking, you know, this is Conor McGregor. And he was landing this left hand at ease. Thinking to myself, yo, if this was them small gloves, I'd be looking like Jose Al. Yes, the power is for real. That backhand is a crusher. And like I said, the, the guy lives up to all expectations. He can have a knock. You know, I went in there experiment. I stuck it on him and he gave as good as he got. You know, like I said at the start, the guy is the real deal and credit to him. If you could give us like one or two or if not three things that you learned from that camp that you're looking forward to implementing when you go back to, when you go to Dubai in the new year, like what, what would one or two or three things be? What I liked is how tight-knit everything was over there. Um you know, social media and all that stuff is forgotten about. Do you know what I mean? I think we live in a world today where people can kind of become a little bit too much concentrated on the social media side of things and forget about hard work. Hard work over there was the key to every day. And like I said, I, I just pride myself on hard work. You know what I mean? So when I get back training, it's going to be, forget the social media side of things when you're training for a fight, lock the door and do your thing. Do you know what I mean? And like I said at the start, the setting over there, a little gym in the middle of nowhere, Connor and his team, putting in that graft, and like he said the other day, he's creating a masterpiece and he'll show it all in January the 23rd. And I just like how it's unfolding. And then you're going to go over to Dubai on, what day did you say? The second, I'm sure. The second, yeah. How long are you going to be there for? And also, are you going to go to Floyd Island as well for the fight? Yeah, so we'll go to... No as way! Far as, I know, it's, no as way. far as I know, as far as I know, it's Dubai for like two and a half weeks and then Floyd Island for the last week and a half. Uh, so we go on the second and we're home on like the 26th or something like that. So you get the month over there. I'm like a child at Christmas. I can't wait. Um, I still can't believe I'm part of it. Even talking to you now. Well, I'm you know, excited for you. I'm excited for you. That fight, that's fight week. There's three fight, three events on that one. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Connor being the last event. And yeah. I think there's there's only one hotel on the island, so everybody's in that hotel. You know, <laughs> so, you, know you can only... I don't have to tell you what to expect. It's going to be crazy. That is actually insane. Isn't so it? What a, what a, like... You're actually... And you're being paid to go over and <laughs> some <laughs> people's dreams. <laughs> Ross, is, Ross is having a wet dream there, like... I'm sitting, I'm sitting there being like... Like I, I was only saying to Basil, like if there was like one thing you could do for like twenty twenty one, it would actually be like it'd be in the first month, it'd be over to January Boyd Oil, it'd be the Max Holloway versus Calvin Carter, then yeah. Leon Edwards versus uh Cosma, and then McGregor versus Poirier. It was like they're the three best, the three strongest cards I think I've ever seen in a week. Yeah, without without a doubt. And like I say, guys, I keep saying it. Look, I'm just obviously I'm a boxer, and you know since I went out. A few years ago, I've just been working my arse off. Do you know what I mean? I've had my ups and downs, and for this to come round for me, I'm just very grateful for it. You oh, know, UFC yeah, two point seven, and to be playing the little part that I'm playing. And like I said, going forward with my own career, this happening for me just shows me. I say to myself all the time, Dylan, the harder you work, the more things will happen for you. And it's pro- the proof is there, and I'm a prime example of it. You know what I mean? Just keep showing up, keep doing your thing, and believing in it, and it'll happen. You know, come on, a kid from Waterford. Sparring partner for Conor McGregor for UFC 257. People wouldn't believe you. You know what I mean? Why? Because I just keep going to the gym and I keep working hard. Bill, for the people that didn't hear your, when you were on with us a few videos ago, can you, can you tell us the story again how when you were in Mexico and you are all gloved up, ready to go? <laughs> yeah, so I've been through the works. I got signed in America. Uh, this was my coming out party. I got knocked out in the third round. I needed to get my career back on track. I flew to Mexico on my own in the dressing room, gloved up, ready to fight. The doctor comes in and says the fight's not happening. I get uh, a, a new start in Germany. I go over there. I'm living the dream for a year. The company goes bust from COVID. And besides that, there's a whole lot of other stuff. Shows getting cancelled when I was living in England. The opponents pulling out. You know, you couldn't write it. I've been literally through the gutter. But like I said, I just, I'm just i not going to dwell on it. I just kept training. I just said it is what it is. Let's drive forward here. And here I am. I'm heading to Dubai. The weekend is crazy. It's unreal, Ross, isn't it? It's unreal, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, it's sort of weird. I don't know if it's almost like condescending to say, but I'm actually like quite proud of you. Like, you know I mean? Like, ah, and you, thank you, Ross. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, you just keep on, like you say, you keep on showing up and like you keep yeah. on putting in that work. And exactly. Like, like I, I, I could have packed it in at any stage of them things that I named and it would have been justified. People would have said, ah, yeah, sure, look, it was the right decision. But, I just have this gut feeling that something's going to happen for me in boxing. I don't know what it is. I don't know when. I don't know how. But as long as that feeling's there, I'll be in the gym doing my thing. Do you know what I mean? And I just need to keep... To, it hasn't put me wrong yet. And I'll keep trusting that feeling. And Like I said, this is just... A, like I've, I've never been proud of anything that I've done, being honest. But when mm-hmm. this comes around, I give myself a pat on the back. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. this is this is something like to be proud of. Do you know what I mean? Well, man, and, you're, you're literally keep, bursting into 2021 all guns blazing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, I'm at I'm at that stage now. Look, obviously, I'm tied up with the Connor thing until the end of January, yeah. and then I'll be pushing for the big fights myself. Look, I know I'm ready for these guys. Talk about the Eddie Hearn boys, uh, Ryan Charlton, this Florian Marku, all these names. I beat all those guys. I know I do. I just know I do. And the best thing about it is I'm like a dark horse because I haven't had that spotlight. I haven't had them big promoters. I haven't had the TV back of me. Do you know what I mean? Or that big massive following on social media. But I've had to put the graft in, and now slowly but surely I'm getting there. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna get my shot at all these guys. When the Connor fight finishes, I'm gonna offer it to Dennis Silbe. You know that's a fight that I want. I'm not wasting any time on it this year. He's either up for it or he's not. If he's not, I'm going for the Sky Sports boys in England. Love it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fantastic, <laughs> man. Like, I, I do, I, I do think the limelight that could get shown on yourself over the next. Uh, month is going to be massive for you. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's going to make you a name. Yeah. Well, a much larger name in boxing. But uh, before we actually like move on to what you're going to do next, I just have like two final questions on the McGregor. Number one, you have to watch a lot of tape on Dustin Poirier trying like mimic his style and like how did you find that and what was it like to mimic him? And then number two is what result are we going to see? Uh, uh, come Fight Island, I think it's January 23rd. And uh, will there be some form of uh, a Dylan Moore and one two combo special that will get the job done? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, guys, like I said, look, when I was asked to be brought in for the sparring, I, I took it fairly seriously and I have 
to study Dustin Broye and I have changed my style to mimic him as much as I can. Um, like I said, this training camp isn't about me improving. It's about me playing my role and everybody else playing their role and Conor McGregor winning coming January 23rd. And he is definitely on course for that. I think Conor McGregor beats Dustin Broye January 23rd at by knockout. I'm calling it today. And after sparring the guy, like I said, I always say it as it is. I'm putting my money on Conor against anybody in that UFC, to be honest with you. There you have it, Basmo. I know, Dave, the horse's mouth. And then, Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, like, obviously, I don't want to dwell on this, but, like, obviously, while you were over there, the massive stuff with Jake Paul and all was coming out. So, like, do you think once he, once Conor implements the stuff you've taught him now on January 23rd, <laughs> that knockout, will he have you back in again for that Jake Paul camp? Or what, what, what the fuck is happening? Boys, there, listen... Jake Paul wasn't even mentioned in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Jake, god. <laughs> he wasn't even mentioned. You know, um I've seen the video personally. I think it's very disrespectful. What? I know if Jake or Logan Paul shows up to do boy and I've got nothing got to do with it, I will sleep that guy on the spot and give him a taste of the real world. Someone needs to teach them guys some manners. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the guy plays video games for God's sake. Or is it video games he plays or makes videos or something like that? No, it's just um, videos. More videos. YouTube. And he, or, yeah, and he raps. He raps as well. Yeah. And then uh, he boxes. Yeah, and I don't know what kind of world we're living in today, but for a YouTuber yeah. to call out someone like who we've just been speaking about, Conor McGregor, it's it's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and it's yeah. his, brother, his brother booked in a fight with Floyd Mayweather. It was it was just... He, they, they tried to outdo each other. It was just crazy. It was just crazy, man. I, I was just yeah, like, oh, it's just and this mad there, world man. we're living in. But yeah. I can say Jake or Logan Paul wasn't even mentioned in Portugal. It was like it didn't exist. You know, connor has got... He, he's busy with the real world. You know what I mean? He's got a real fight January the 23rd and some guy making a video for YouTube is irrelevant. Yeah. No, yeah four we Paul we, brothers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck the Jameson brothers and the Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but, yeah, no, we just had to ask that because, like, that was uh, no, of course, hey, it's, a, it's, it's um, it's a main topic in, in today's world, you know. Oh, Connor and the, the YouTuber, and I can tell you, he wasn't even mentioned genuinely. The guy wasn't even mentioned, that's how relevant he is in Connor McGregor's life at the minute. Yeah, it sort of came at a bad time as well around Christmas time, so that that hype would die off, and which will unfortunately happen. Uh, also, like, I give come a- on, do you think that Conor McGregor is going to be bothered about a YouTuber calling him into the ring? Come on, for God's sake, no. you know. No, but like, it, it, like maybe when he's retiring, he might go, you know what, that's a handy 50 mil to make. <laughs> hey, and, cre- and credit to him, he'd yeah. be right to do so, you know, but he's definitely not bothered about it or worried no. in any way. He's laughing at it. I'm no. sure he's, he's laughing at it. No, Conor seems like, obviously you'd know better, but Conor seems like from the outside looking in, he's more focused on becoming a world champ again, not a, a YouTube champ. Well, here, just one quick shout-out to Katie Taylor, uh, winning the fighter of the year for 2020. Um, Dylan, what, what you make of Katie Taylor these days? Yo, Katie Taylor should be the president of Ireland. I keep saying it. Yes, cheers um, to that. Like, like, wow, how underappreciated is she? You know what I mean? Um, not by us. Not by us. Not by us. Not by us, but, like, what else can she do? Like, she's done it all. There is nothing else Katie Taylor can do. She can knock out Jake Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guys, like, one of the best fights I've ever seen live, I was at Joshua versus Tackham in Cardiff, um, sitting ringside at watching Katie Taylor fight an Argentinian. And it was one of the best fights I've ever seen live. She is 10 out of 10 unreal. Is she the GOAT? Yeah. Unbelievable. The yeah. GOAT and every other GOAT. Yeah, she's unreal. Come on, man. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I like to say she's actually Ireland's greatest ever sports athlete, regardless of gender. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, like, just- Oh, sorry, yeah, go on. No, just how she's changed women's boxing is crazy. It's crazy. You turn on Sky Sports every weekend now and there's girls fighting for world titles. Why? That's because of Katie Taylor. I know. She, when, she, when she retires and sits back, I don't even think she'll be able to comprehend everything that happened. Yeah. You just can't fault her. Even out of the ring, she's just such a nice person, down to earth. Um, you wouldn't even think she's done anything in, in boxing. She doesn't talk about very religious... And it just seems like a really, really good person. Yeah. Right. Although I think it's funny that Eddie Hearn always has to like stop her boxing. She's like, oh, I fought again next week. <laughs> <laughs> that that an Al, that's an Al Four and Katie Taylor impression. <laughs> that was my best, best Katie Taylor. What do you think of that one, Dill? <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, I knew who you were getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right here, lads. Let's look at the 2021 a bit, right? Because there's a few things that are going to happen. There's a few fighters that we want to ask you about. 
and we'll go into it now. Um, right, 2021, already, you're going to be going to Foyle Island. You'll be there basically for January, right? Uh, also, one person you have to look out for is Dean Barry. He's fighting on the Wednesday card. He's Irish. He's from... Uh, he's, he's Guys, from... Do, you know, do you know what's crazy? Just a little story. Obviously when, I kick, obviously, when I used to kickbox uh, years ago, one of the first trips I ever went away on, I didn't know anybody. It was like this team Ireland going to Poland or somewhere. And I sit on the bus. Oh, this is seven, eight years ago. And I sit in beside Dean Barry. First time meeting him. And I remember Dean telling me he's going to do this and that. And then I was telling him, well, I'm really a boxer and I'm going to do this and that. And now I'm going to fight Ireland and he's going to fight Ireland. Do you know what I mean? And well, credit to him. I'm delighted for him getting that contract to the UFC. Unbelievable. Yeah. Such a nice guy as well. We had him on the show a few weeks ago. Just genuine gent. Yeah, he's almost, yeah, he's almost, he's almost like almost a bit soft or something. As in like, like he's a little soft, hard character, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I mean, you you, you couldn't picture him in the octagon, octagon guys out. Yeah, yeah, he was off with George St. Pierre train and Max Holloway. He's actually like friendly with Max Holloway. Now he's fighting on the same fight week as well. Crazy stories and fighting the fight. Yeah. Well, okay, so yeah, so make sure to keep an eye out for Dean, right? But um, he he tra- he is his coach is on Robbie as well, so you, you'll get to see him. But uh, right, so you're doing that in January. Obviously, there's like I think it's February or March. Mayweather fighting Logan mm-hmm. Paul. Like who? Like after January, Dill. What does 2021 look like for you and the, for you and in the combat scene? Um, after January, for me, like I said, I want the big fights. You know, I've got 17 fights now, 16 wins. Um, yeah, I've put the hard work in, and now I want my shot at the big guys. You know, I always knew I was ready to mix it with them, and now the time has come. You know, uh, coming off the back of this camp with McGregor, like you said, it'll shine a good light on me, and it'll put a bit of a target on my back, and I'm sure I won't have to go looking too far at the end of January and yeah I'm ready I'm ready I've been waiting a lifetime for this do you know what I mean yeah. be it on Sky Sports or back in Germany or wherever you know there's nothing happening in Ireland for the foreseeable future that's my opinion you know it's a, it's a long way off so yeah England, Germany America wherever I'm good to go but definitely I'm pushing for them big big fights and Dilo, like I said, you seem to found almost like a second home in O'Rourke's gym uh, there seems to be like a, a, a good crop of fighters in there at the moment and they're all seem to be working towards the good, the same thing and like it's you know I mean you're sort of your vibe attracts your tribe and that sort of thing so tell us out of all those guys now Rourke's team who do you think is the one to watch out for if you could just pick one <laughs> yeah you're kind of putting me on the spot but you'd have you're to be excited much. about you'd, you'd have to be excited about them all they're all very very good talents um, mm. who would I be the most excited about I'd say Tiernan Bradley Tiernan Bradley, I have inspired him. You know what I mean? The guy is another really one to watch out. He's very exciting. He's at an early stage in his career, though. I think he only has two fights. But like I said, I can say the same about them all in there. You know what I mean? Genuinely, there's none of them not to be excited about. And even go past O'Rourke's gym, Ireland as a whole. You know, I know there's not many shows happening here, but we've got a lot of kids on the ground working hard, waiting for their opportunities just like I am. You know, and there's bucket loads of talent. Absolute bucket loads. Yeah, I was kind of, I'm also excited about the McKenna brothers as well. They they seem to be like Stevie goes in there and he goes like kill uh, like every single person yeah. is thrown with like such violence. But like <laughs> when you actually talk to him, you're just like, well, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. And then you know, Aaron is Aaron's so like picky and choosy with his shots, and uh, it's beautiful. Like when I, I was watching them go to the body uh, in their last two fights, well actually it was like Stevie's two fights ago. Yeah. Stevie almost like. Showed up on Thursday for his last fight and fought on Friday. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I twice like, in a week. Uh, twice in a yeah, week. Yeah, twice in a week. Yeah, so uh, I watched the first one. I didn't get to see the second one because it was almost like the fight was over before I even knew it was announced. Um, but like they're they're looking very very impressive as well. And I just feel like yeah, in a year's two time, you know, Ireland has about eight or nine, maybe ten fighters that like are going to be you know looking in the top fifteen in the world rankings. Yeah, of course, without a doubt. And then some massive domestic dust-ups down the line. Imagine, I don't know, is Aaron McKenna my way, but me and Aaron McKenna are, me and Paddy Donovan was mentioned the other day. And these are all massive fights for Ireland. You know, we just need to get this pandemic out of the way and mm. get the three arena packed and get them all on the, on, on the TV. Is that is that a realistic possibility, deal? That's the one thing, like, like the, 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 getting the boxing going in Ireland. Like, with, with all this talent, you almost have to go abroad to fight, which is uh, disappointing. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. 
all the ingredients are here. Uh, I just need someone to come along and take them all and put it together. Yeah, because um, these, loads of these lads are like such brilliant lads and they dedicate their whole lives to it, even yourself. For for younger generations not to be able to go and watch these lads fight to then be, become their idols is yeah. very, very disappointing, to be honest. I know, but look, I was of your thinking there a few months ago and I was like, but it is what it is. You can't just dwell on it. You need to get up and go. Sure. That's why I've been fighting abroad because if I didn't fight abroad, I wouldn't afford it at all. Do you know what I mean? And you'll quickly be forgotten about. To all these lads in Ireland, you need to get up and get on your toes. You know, keep busy. It's We're in a sport where take six months off and you're forgotten about. You need to stay yeah. relevant. 100%, man. That's what, you know, Tiernan, you need, that's what Tiernan said when he took yeah, that time off to, in New York. You need to stay relevant. You know what I mean? You'll just become forgotten about. Um, you know, like I said, you need to keep moving forward. doesn't matter how much, but you need to keep moving that way. I, I do sort of think that like you're alluding to it is mad that we can't put some form of show on here like you take all the O'Rourke boys you take uh, yourself you take the McKenna's Pete, Pete, you know I mean? Pete Taylor's gym has got a, a bucket load of lads up there <laughs> mm. so like, I'm, just, I'm just like why can't we do, do a you know a, an all Ireland show you know what I mean yeah I know and uh, like even you look at Connor Slater when they done the Ray Mile at homecoming TG4 got their biggest viewers December last year so the public wanted you know people will sit down to watch boxing do you know what I mean and, and then if it's a Irish guys fighting everybody's on it so like I said all the ingredients are there hopefully in the future you know I'm still holding out for a big homecoming here in Waterford I just need this pandemic to leave and people to be allowed to attend events again and I get the ball rolling with that you know that is definitely something I'm going to make happen yeah I think, I think the pandemic might turn things around for the boxing as well if the boxing takes on the Bellator model to have all Irish lads on the card and therefore like drive everyone's uh, intrigue and stuff, it's it, uh, the big things are coming next year because people need the views, people need the money. I mean, if it makes yeah. it, it makes sense, you know, exactly. And if it don't make money, it don't make sense, exactly. Dill, Dill, like a, a, a couple more things where you let you get back to your joyriding there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 2021, the one fight the whole entire fucking world wants. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts, bud? Guys, um, I just can't look past Fury. I think Fury beats Joshua. That's been my opinion since day one. Um, yeah, I think Anthony Joshua's handmade for Tyson Fury. You know what I mean? Strong, yeah. upright, stiff up the middle, looking for them big punches. And Tyson Fury being Tyson Fury just dances around and does his thing. Do you know what I mean? Popping that jab and using them angles, the guy have crazy movement for a heavyweight. But it's heavyweight boxing and anything can happen. That's why we love it. Um, I'd like to see it happen next year, although I can't even see it happening next year. Really? Boxing's a, bit mad, boxing's a bit mad at times. I think guys need to take the attitude of the UFC and just get in there and fight. Yeah, um, yeah you know, but there's a stigma of boxing that when you lose, uh, you're kind of washed up. And you look at the UFC, guys can have four and five losses, six even, and they're still the most exciting fighters in the divisions. Why, yeah, what do you think? What do you think's going to happen? Pacquiao's got six or seven losses. You know what I mean, like yeah, and box offs every time. Yeah, but I'm kind of talking lower tier. You know, Pacquiao. Oh, I know. Pacquiao I, I know. But it. what I'm saying, you get to a Joshua Fury standard, you should be able to take an L and still be there. You know what I mean? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. You look at my prime example. I tell everybody, is Sam Egan. Sam's got three or four losses, and every time this guy's fighting, I sit down to watch him. I'd sit down to watch him quicker than I'd sit down to watch some undefeated guy. Records mean nothing. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so look, I think there's just that bit of a stigma with boxing and guys to be trying to prolong that for as long as they can. And then with Fury and Joshua, you're talking multi-millions of pounds, you know what I mean? So I can see why it takes a while to get made. So you don't think, it, you think that's going to be the biggest thing or do you think Usyk is one person that's... I'd be surprised if we've seen Fury and Joshua next year. What about you, Ross? I'd be surprised if we didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we skip 2021 if we're not having that fight, please? No. I, I honestly think it is going to happen this year. I feel like they just need to do a 50-50 split on the purse or whatever, you know, and then they, they should build in the rematch clause that the winner gets 60 and the loser gets 40 on the rematch yeah, clause. Yeah, which, which will be fair. Yeah, and then I think, you know, get, get the, get the fight uh, signs here delivered. I mean, it's going to be on pay-per-view. It's going to do big pay-per-view numbers. And also, the way I look at it is also, I mean, like, yeah, you don't get the gate. But, like, at the end of the day, like, that's such a small percentage. Like, just say the gate was 
20 million or whatever, right? By the time you actually get, you know, you pay everyone off or whatever, you pay all the staff, you pay whoever you have to pay, there's probably only about 8 million, 9 million, 10 million left to go to the actual fighters. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to make about 40 or 50 million off this fight anyway. So you might as well just do it and then do the rematch again. I know. I mean, you're I only know. putting off this massive payday. And again, like, I get more worried when Joshua fights. Every time Joshua fights someone not named Tyson Fury, I'm worried he's going to get chained because he got chained yeah, by, by, by Ruiz. I feel like when Tyson Fury fights, he has to fight like the elite of the elite to actually put him away. Like like someone like a Deontay Wilder. And that's another thing I'd like to see. If Joshua loses, I actually don't want to see a rematch because I feel like Fury like will hammer him in the first re- first time out. And the second time <laughs> out, he'll actually like, hammer him again. I, I, I just look at that match and just think it's so bad for Joshua. His head movement isn't good enough. His footwork's not good enough. Yeah. And he's been caught in the end of people's punches far too many times. I feel like Fury said he'd get him out of there in three rounds. I feel like if Fury wanted to get him out in three rounds, he could do he it. He could. Yeah. Fury's oh, no. an enigma, lads. He's just the, hey, he's in a different Jan- level. Never mind those guys. January the 23rd, UFC 247. McGregor, probably. Come on, watch the predictions. Uh, I have I have McGregor round one. I feel like... Round Poirier, one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 like, I really rate Dustin Poirier. I think he's a brilliant fighter. I really, really like him as a person as well. Like, great yeah. that McGregor's donating that money to his charity as well. I yeah. think that's absolutely Unbelievable. incredible. Unbelievable. Um, but, like, when it just comes down to it, you know what I mean? Like, I was watching an interview with John Cavanaugh there during the week, and he was saying, like, you know, Justin Poirier can go to sports psychologist for the next 10 years, but, like, when he sees Conor McGregor, he knows that was the fella who knocked him out. And yeah. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even a clean shot that knocked him out as well. Remember yeah, people was said like, that was a boy? Remember people said that was, that, was a fa- that, that he faked? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that was going around? And I was like, nah. did he actually like so I mean, the amount of talk. Like, like yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Connor's actually so cerebral. Like, there's actually video footage of him. I think it's either Herb Dean or John McCarthy. And they're saying, like, this side of the head is fair game, but anywhere from here behind is not. And Connor actually hit him here, knocked his equi- equilibrium out. And then like, yeah. when he was on the ground, he, he, he finished him. Poirier is hittable. And I think yeah. when you're hittable and you're fighting Conor McGregor, you're in a bad spot. And I don't yeah. think his wrestling is good enough to actually get McGregor down. So I think stylistically, it's a terrible match- matchup. I think it's going to be very similar to when Conor fought Eddie Alvarez. I think he's yeah. going to be in out and he's going to hit him with shots. And I, th- I think once Conor hits him with his first shot, it, uh, Dustin will be shooting for takedowns from very far out because he's not going to want to get hit with that again. And Conor's eventually going to put him away. Connor's gonna have a field day. <laughs> Connor, Connor's his like boogie man. Like, like when they when they square up again to like make eye contact, like Poirier is gonna be like, imagine I'd be him back then. Like how things would have been different. Yeah. See, the problem for everyone in that UFC lightweight division, and including Khabib in this, the problem is when you fight Connor, the fight starts on the feet, so you automatically start at a disadvantage. Yes. So like ev- every striker in that lightweight division. Is that a disadvantage? And I go as far as to say, maybe bar Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, every striker at welterweight is at a disadvantage as well. You know what I mean? You are in his game, and he's got that death touch in his left hand, and he, he will put you away. And it's not even just his left hand. It's not like you know his his right hand's a pillow. You know what I mean? Like you, you no. don't get clipped by that either. You know what I mean? He's just Phil can test so that. I can testify, boys. It's there. It's in both testify, hands. Testify. Testify. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. Up there. <laughs> it's in the left and right. It's in the left and right. Well, the, it, it, I, I just see him like, like Justin Gaethje, like likes to go to war, if you know what I mean. Like, I can see him fighting Justin Gaethje. I see him knocking him out. Uh, Poirier and Ed, Eddie Alvarez were able to knock out Justin Gaethje. I see Charles Oliveira, and yeah, if that goes to the ground, like, very, very dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, his submissions are outrageous. Yeah. Most in UFC history. But again, on the feet, where it starts, he's been knocked out before. And when you fight yeah. Conor McGregor, you've been knocked out before. That's why Nate Diaz was such a hard fight for Conor and still one of his hardest fights because he's a bloody zombie. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to be a zombie to give him a hard fight. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? That's why I just think Poirier, I, I think he is going to, like, when he says he's building that masterpiece, like, he believes that he's going to do this masterpiece. And, like, Conor's, like, strongest asset it's not his left hand. It's actually his belief in his own ability. Now you said it. Exactly. 
Oh, the, like you just can't convince me otherwise that he's not going to win. <laughs> Ross is a believer. Yeah. But like, I'm just like I've seen Dustin Poirier and I've seen him win and like I've, I've probably backed against him once or twice when he did go out and win, and I, he he doesn't really like he never steamrolls anyone. You know what I mean? And he's not going to steamroll McGregor. You know what I mean? No. So I, I, I honestly do believe the only person in that lightweight division who could be Connor is could be. And I agree, hundred percent. I have Poirier to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I can't, after what Connor did to him before, and absolutely got in his head. Uh, maybe Eddie Alvarez was the one person he got more into his head, or Aldo. Gee, he gets into everyone's fucking head. What? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. He does yeah. without a doubt. I, th- I think. Conor McGregor wins them fights far from the octagon. Yeah. I think the loss to Khabib can make you go either one of two ways. Be like, here, look, I'm never going to achieve that level, so I'm just going to ride out into the sunset, or else I'm actually going to get back in there and become a crazed animal and go again. And he's, and, he looks, uh, it looks like he's, he's become the, the crazed animal and he's going again. Trust me, I've seen it. The guy's possessed with what he's doing. Yeah. Love it. See, I actually think when Khabib beats most people, they're actually then broken, if that makes sense. I suppose yeah. he, you can tell Connor wasn't broken by it. See, when Connor was saying it's only business, he knows it's a contest. You feel know I me? Mean? He's not actually emotionally invested in it. Yeah, and you know what? I'd say one thing about Connor is he's probably, by the looks of it, a very sore loser. So I'd say when he <laughs> loses, he wants to come back better than ever to make sure he doesn't lose again. Yeah, and he's making sure of it. You know, I was sparing him. Last week, that's six weeks out from the fight. The way he's performing, you'd think it was fight week. And how many rounds were you doing with him actually, Dave? So, like, there were five minute rounds, it could be three or four. I think no, four was the most, yeah. So, like, three or four or five minute rounds, depending on what was on the schedule. Mm. And there was, there was never, there was never like, uh, it got to a, a third or fourth round, and like maybe you got the better of the last 30 seconds. He wanted to do another one. No, no, <laughs> we didn't get to that. No, no, we didn't get to that. Still, did you, he, he, he did the young kids there, the four rounds gloves, did he? Sorry, guys. Sorry, I was just saying, he didn't suggest the four ounce gloves at any stage for sparring. No, I know, I know. We had the proper sparring gloves on him, <laughs> thankfully. Did, did, the, did the lads have their kids there as well? Because I saw like Connor Jr. looks like an absolute savage, obviously, Keen County. Yeah, yeah. Like... Yo, this is, you're asking me who to watch out for, Connor Jr. in the future. Oh my God, he's ordering his little wrestling suit. He's watching his dad. You know, um, what an experience this child has. And, you know, he is definitely one to watch in the future. I seen McGregor post a video the other night. They're all watching a Christmas film and the child is over punching the I bag. That. I saw that, man. You, you know, come on. Like, that's someone to be excited about. Ross, yeah. anything, anything else we need to cover? Because, like, we could be here all day and then... Uh... <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm actually just, like, delighted if uh, things are working out in your favour, Dale, to be honest. Um, and thank you, guys. Really, really am. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing Connor back in action. I'm sure, like the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. And then I'm excited to see what 2021 brings for you. Hopefully, five or six wins. I know you like to stay active, and you know, I mean, I, I think probably your past issues with fights falling out and you know promoter issues. I feel like you you need to get those extra ones in to get them over the line. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, guys. All that stuff was all meant to be. You know what I mean? All meant to be, all get me ready for where I am today. Yeah, and um, do you think you'll do a lot more training up in O'Rourke's now, just with the way the pandemic is? Or what, what way do you see your training when you come back? Or will you just assess the situation after you come back from Abu Dhabi? Yeah, at the moment, I'm just chilling with this McGregor camp. Um, I'm enjoying it. You know, it's something different for me. Um, like I said, it's a great experience. Uh I'm just trying to take it all in and when that's said and done, I'll sit down, have a think about what I'm doing. I could be going back to Germany. I could be going to England. I don't know yet. Um, There's a lot of things happening. I'm in no rush. You know, like I said, I've been active for the last two or three months. I've had three fights in three months. So I'm in no rush to fight again. You know, I'll sit down, see what's what, make a right decision and go again. Yeah, I think you're, 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 uh, your value will increase as well over the next month as well. So don't sign anything too soon, you know. Yeah, it's called the McGregor effect. My phone's been off the hook since I went over there. It's been crazy. That, that, hin- that Tinder's blowing up, is it? <laughs> <laughs> not for me, because I'm not on it. Whoever else is doing it. Oh, fair play to them, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fake still up. The fake still up. <laughs> yeah, and he's still out there. Oh, actually, oh, that's a real no. thing, isn't it? 
Some yeah, of the they're easy. Oh, that's hilarious. Yo, man. they've got Snapchat, Tinder, you name it. So yeah. Love it. Well, in fairness, like handsome fella. Someone <laughs> someone's gonna have to, someone have, someone's gonna have to carry all your bells, man, you know. But like, oh stop. Yeah, yeah, before we wrap things up, everyone make sure to like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment as well. But make sure to follow Dill as well. But Dill, before we let you go, 2020, what a crazy year. Um there, like I know obviously your little brother looks up to you and I'm sure there's loads of other young lads that like a sport to be like yourself. What can you say to them that are planning on going on their journey, whether it be boxing, MMA, anything? What you have to say? Guys, if I could say anything to anyone, not even kids, just adults. As soon as you strive for more in life, like things become difficult, things will go wrong, things won't work out for you, everything will go in your way, and that's all meant to happen. It's not meant to be easy, you know, like all the stuff that's gone wrong for me, it's meant to be, you know what I mean? But the key is to not give up, you know, you have to keep going. Giving up is too easy, you have to keep going to see what's there waiting for you. I've kept going, and a training camp of Conor McGregor is there waiting for me. Come on, like the proof is there, do you know what I mean? But like I said, it isn't going to be easy, but it'll be worth it, 100%. Ross, any, any, can you beat that? <laughs> yeah, man, obviously. You have to keep going. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. <laughs>